Hi Emma, hi Kunal. So good to see you. Welcome to the Elf Philharmonie. Nice to see you too. Thanks for having us. Yeah, nice to see you. So Emma, how does it feel to be back? It feels cozy and bright, warm and phenomenal. And I have such amazing memories from the very first time I was here in May 2021 for the African American Composers Project. And that week that I spent here was filled with so much inspiration and love that it's a memory that I carry with me whenever I think about the Elbe Philharmonie. Uh, since then, I've always felt like I could get lost in the architecture of this building, in the energy of its fantasy, and also the spirit of innovation and all the truly wondrous performers who have stepped inside this building. What are your dreams for the future of Lieder Recitals or classical music in general? We have so many. We talk about this at, at every rehearsal, basically, yeah. <laughs> and it makes our rehearsals three hours long because we're talking most of the time. Okay, we won't have yeah. so much time now. <laughs> so, so to put it shortly, I think um, what we dream of is basically the, the current lead generation and, and, the, and the people um, after us as well to, to start um, taking more risks, to be more creative, to ask themselves more questions about why they're programming the certain way, why they're performing the certain way. That's what we try to do and it's a process and it comes with time, but we hope that, um, that we can help inspire others to do that and we receive inspiration from our colleagues all the time to do the same. My dreams for the future of, of song recitals and, and also classical music in general is celebrate all the different kinds of voices we are hearing now in the 21st century to celebrate new voices in music, in poetry. How can we also collaborate with other colleagues in different disciplines so that they inspire our practice and to blur the boundaries between uh, between art forms to show a universality that we share with so many other arts practices and share our audiences. And about your programs, what makes a program a good program for you? How many floors do we have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. For me, I always like to view a program like um, like a 12 course tasting menu at a, at a Michelin restaurant, for example, and you need to um, guide the, the palate of the, the listener through an array of sensations and discoveries and things that comfort them and things that challenge them uh, so that by the end of it they're, they're left um, fed but not um, <laughs> overly fed, not underly fed and, and satisfied. And, and what does it mean to be satisfied? It means a lot of different things and of course it's subjective but we try to bring them on a journey with us and exploring music in so many different ways and to have this kind of roller coaster of uh, dynamic and expression. Last question, how do you spend the last few minutes right before a concert? Typically on the floor, um, with my back on the on the floor and just trying to kind of feel my back and, and get grounded and uh, just some quiet time. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll probably I'll probably again try and get in touch with my breath, do a meditation. And also often what I'll do right before going on is I'll look into a mirror and I'll go like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Then thank you so much. Have a great concert and we are very much looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>